Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Iannuzzi. I'm a software development manager in Amazon Web Services. In this video, I'll introduce Amazon VPC IP Address Manager, or IPAM for short, and demo creating an IPAM with AWS organizations. Let's first start out learning a little bit about IPAM, which was launched at reInvent in 2021. IPAM allows customers to automate their IP assignments, monitor their IP usage across their entire network, and perform retrospective analysis, understanding where IPs were used and for how long. And this will work for both IPv4 and IPv6 and across multiple AWS accounts in all your AWS regions. Let's cover some key concepts in IPAM. First, there is the scope. This is your IP space for a single network. By default, we provide you a private scope and a public scope to cover all of your private space and public space respectively. Then there is a pool, which is a collection of contiguous IP address ranges or CIDRs used to organize your IP addresses. This will be one of the main constructs we are using throughout the use of IPAM. And then there is an allocation, which is a CIDR assignment from a pool to another resource. So think about assigning that CIDR block to your VPC, for example. Let's take a look at a potential IPAM setup. Here I have my test IPAM with both the default public and private scope. I then have top level allocations for the, to represent my AWS cloud, a slash 22 in the public scope and a slash 14 in the private scope. Digging a little deeper, you can see that I have the same type of pool hierarchy in both scopes. I have a top level pool per region and then sub pools for a dev and prod environments. Now these are the pools that I'll go ahead and allocate my VPCs from, which you'll see as we walk through a demo a little bit later. Let's go ahead and take a look at now actually setting up that IPAM. Let's take a look at the network that we're gonna set up IPAM for. Currently my network consists of three accounts. The first one's not pictured, it's part of the AWS organization and it's the organization management account. I then have two accounts which represent existing services within my network. Account two, which is on the left there, is for a fictitious billing service. And then account three, is for our fictitious inventory service. You can see each of these services have multiple subnets with multiple instances. We're now gonna go through the steps of enabling IPAM. Step one will be to create a network admin account. I don't show this, but simply go create another AWS account, add it to your org. Step two, we're gonna go into the org management account and set the IPAM delegated admin to that new network admin account. And then step three is to create the IPAM in that new delegated admin network management account. Okay, once I've created that new network management account, the next step is to go into my organization management account, go into the Amazon VPC IP address manager console, as you can see here, and then we're gonna go ahead and delegate control to that network admin account. To do that, we're gonna to go to settings, we're gonna go ahead and edit the settings here and paste in the network admin account, view the details, you can see what kind of permissions are being granted, and then go ahead and, and save that. After that, we're ready to go ahead and create the IPAM. Go ahead and open your network administration account, and this is where we're going to create the IPAM. To create your IPAM, go ahead and select Create IPAM to open the Create IPAM window. First thing you're going to notice is the permission to allow data replication. This, you know, IPAM essentially acts like a global service. It pulls your IP data from all of your regions into a single IPAM account. I'm going to go ahead and add a name and a description and then select my operating regions. We recommend you select, you know, all regions as your operating regions, but these are the regions that IPAM will monitor and allow you to manage your IP space in. Once you've done that, you can optionally add tags and then go ahead and create your IPAM. IPAM creation is fairly quick, and then you can see here from my new IPAM, I have the default public and default private scope, and you can see all the operating regions below. Once you've created your IPAM, it will take IPAM between five minutes and an hour to ingest all of your current IP usage. It really depends on the size of your organization. Once onboarding is complete, you immediately start getting some useful data. Let's take a look at the IPAM dashboard. First thing you'll notice here under the summary section is managed and unmanaged ciders. 
These are the ciders that are being tied back to IPAM pools. When you first create your IPAM, you won't have any pools and therefore everything is unmanaged. Compliant and non-compliant ciders are also related to pools and, and some rules that you create when you create your pools. So we'll cover that in another video. Then you can immediately see your non-overlapping ciders and overlapping ciders. You can notice I have a large number of overlapping ciders. And this might be very common uh, for you as well if you use the default VPC, because by default, the default VPC all uses the same cider range. The resources tab is super useful as it lets you explore all of the resources that IPAM was able to find using IP addresses in your org. And you can do a lot of different types of searches here. For example, if you have names on your resources, for example, like I named my inventory service VPC, you can find that very easily. You can also search for non-overlapping uh, CIDR ranges or overlapping resources. You can search by CIDR, uh, owner, region, etc. IP Historical Insights allows you to track CIDR, CIDR usage across your organization over time. For example, if I wanted to know what this particular slash 32, also known as an IP address, was being used, uh, I can see you know, which ENI it is attached to and for which instance. And as this changes, uh, you'll get the full history here. And then lastly, we have a tab for pools. By default, when you create your IPAM, you will not have a pool. And we'll go through pool creation in another video. For further information, please check out our Getting Started Guide for IPAM. Thank you for watching.